Hey, what's up? Timo with Timo Paints, and today we're going to do another video breakdown of a live estimate that I do. On my channel, I have a series where I bring you guys along on a hidden camera while I do an estimate. That way, it kind of gives you guys an idea of how I handle my prospects and potential customers uh, when I'm first meeting them and stuff. So if you have a paint business and you're looking into like making sure you get the perfect bid every single time, click the link in the description below. And there's also a link in there to show you my exact strategy and how I get all my paint leads. All right, so let's get straight into the video. This job uh, was a, a lead that I got running an ad for small jobs. Um, this guy had called me in and he had already uh, tried to do the painting himself. So there's a couple things that's funny about this job. So he called me and he's like, I need you to just touch up. Now, anytime somebody calls me and asks me to just touch up, I typically won't do the job without painting the entire thing. And the reason is he did one coat. And it's not a good solid coat. And every time you paint, you're going to have to do two coats. I'm telling you, I say this again and again and again. You always do two coats. I don't, you know. So anyways, he knew how hard it was because he did it. He didn't want to cut it in because it was too much work. There was tons of what we call holidays, meaning it's like really light and you can heck a seat through it. So his wife wasn't happy. His wife's like, this is not good enough. And he's like, oh, it's good enough. We bought this special paint, this marquee paint, which is it says one coat, you know, one coat paint on it. But it's not the case. Just because it says one coat, that doesn't mean it's going to cover in one coat. You have to apply it right. And there's a technique to do that. So anyways, I, I had this guy out the gate a little bit because he already did it and he knew how hard it was. Second of all, he had his wife in his ear telling him, hey, you're going to have to get this done. I don't care if you pay for it or whatever. So thirdly, it, it's for me, it's an easy job. And he's thinking, oh, a couple hundred bucks. He could just come in and paint the white. But I had to tell him, look, man, if I go in and I paint all this white, just the white, you're still going to see all these light spots everywhere else. And you're not going to be happy because you paid me 200 bucks for what? To still see all these imperfections. So I had to explain to him that in order for me to accept the job, I have to be able to put a coat on the entire area. The whole entire, all of the walls need to be coated, right? Well, not all of the walls, but the area that he specified. So I, I, I came at him and I told him, hey, you know, it's going to be 550 bucks and that's what it's going to take to get this job done. And I explained to him, this is why I'm going to, this is why it's going to cost that. This is my process this is how I'm going to do it. It's how many guys will be here. And he's just like, oh man, that's a lot, you know? So then I was like, well, what were you thinking? What were you expecting to pay, you know, at, at this point? Cause I'm expecting him to have at least a number in mind, something to go off of. Right. And he tells me, oh, well, we had a guy come in and was like 550 or he said uh, 650. 650 had a guy come in at 650, but I figured he just bid it at 650 because he didn't want to do it, which 650 is a good number. That's about right, dude, honestly, because there was some holes in the walls and there was some other stuff. So I told him, hey, you know what? I can come down off my price if you, A, buy all the material, including the paint, the tape, the spackle, the putty, everything needed to get the job done. B, if you move all of the furniture, remove all of the face plates and remove all of the blinds, anything that's going to hinder the process or slow me down. Right. And C, that's it. A and B. I just told him to move everything. So basically, the only time I'll ever come down off my price is if I'm going to be doing less work, if I'm going to be putting out less money. I'm not going to do the same amount of work, the same exact job for less money. Right. So basically what I would have done is I would have went through, touched up the base for him. I said, I'm not going to touch up the base. I said, I'm not going to move everything and I'm not going to take the blinds down and the face plates and all that junk. So he did that. He agreed. It was a four, uh, $400 job. It took me 5.5 hours to get it, five and a half hours to get it done. My helper, five and a half hours, paid him out 80 bucks. So it was like a $320 day. No money out of my pocket except for gas. It was fairly close to my house. Let's go ahead and say 10 bucks. So what is that? About $320 or so for uh, five hours of work, man. Not bad. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, just remember, you know, don't do the same amount of work for less. You know, if you need to negotiate, you don't want to lose the, the client, the prospect, go ahead and negotiate. And by negotiating means neither one of you guys are going to get what you want, right? So do less work. He still pays and, you know, it works out. So, hey. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking for a free estimating guide, it's down in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Uh -huh.